So before we move on with learning uh, the next differentiation technique, what we need to do first is to make sure our factorization is good. The reason why is because when we differentiate using the next uh, rule, the product rule, what we get are results that look like this. And if we then wanted to go about working with that first derivative, so if we wanted to find uh, stationary points, for example, then working it with them in their current form is very challenging. So we really need to be able to factorize these. And so that is what this, is video, this video is all here to do, okay, to get us ready for that process. So if we have a look at number one, uh, we've got the 16x squared uh, times x plus 5 cubed plus 8x x plus 5 to the 4. So we're looking for things that we can pull out uh, that is common to both of these terms. So we can definitely pull out an 8 and definitely pull out an x. So 8x can definitely come out. Now we've got x plus 5 cubed and an x plus 5 to the 4. So we can bring out an x plus 5 cubed from both of those terms, okay? So what that leaves us is we've got a 2x from the 16x squared, okay, to multiply with the 8x to make the 16x squared there. The x plus 5 cubed is covered. The 8x here is covered, uh, but we don't have that x plus 5, so we're going to have to have that as well. So that's 8x, x plus 5 cubed, and we'll have 3x plus 5 from that bracket there. Okay, and now that's in uh, fully factorized form. So if I was then asked, well, where are the stationary points? I could say they're at 0, minus 5, and minus 5 thirds. They're the values of x that will make those brackets 0. So let's have a look at number 2. Now for number 2, um, because we've got these twin brackets, we need to be a little bit more careful. Now we can't factor out... Uh, anything from the coefficients, so we'll have to leave that alone. We can definitely factor out an x minus 1 from both of those brackets, so that can come outside. And we can factor out nx plus 2 squared from both as well. So what are we left with? Well, from here we've got the 3, and we've got one of the x minus 1 brackets, so 3 lots of x minus 1. And over here we've got the 2, the x minus 1's covered, and I've got an x plus 2 remaining. So if I simplify this, I get x minus 1 times x plus 2 squared. And then we've got a 3x plus a 2x, so 5x minus 3 plus 4 is plus 1. So if I was asked to find the stationary points of number 2, they would be at 1, minus 2, and minus a fifth. OK. Now it gets a little bit more tricky, okay? Now, generally, I would be saying that if I was faced with this, because I've got negatives in my, um, in my powers, the indices, um, it would probably be easier to write these as two fractions and then use um, uh, multi cross-multiplication, effectively, and... Uh, making the denominators the same, and then grouping the two fractions together. If you don't want to go down that route, okay, then this is the way you would go about it. So, first of all, I, can't have, I don't have anything in common with the minus 3 and the 5, so I don't need those. I can pull out x to the 4 from both of these terms, though, so that can come out. Now, as for the x minus 1 to the minus 4 and x minus 1 to the minus 3, um, probably our intuition, because we're used to always pulling out uh, the lower of the two indices, so here we pulled out x minus 1, here we pulled out x plus 2 squared, okay? We would naturally probably focus on the minus 3 um, and pull out x minus 1 to the minus 3, but that's not the lowest, is it? It's minus 4. So actually, you pull out the x minus 1 to the minus 4, otherwise you're going to hit trouble. Okay, so x minus 1 all to the minus 4 gets pulled out. 
And what do we have left? Well, I've got the minus 3x coming from that term there. And I've got the 5 coming from this term. Now, what to do with this? Well, x minus 1 to the minus 4 times something will make the x minus 1 to the minus 3. And that would be x minus 1. So that's why we pulled out the x minus 1 to the minus 4, because that leaves us a nice singular bracket inside our factorised part. So simplifying this, x to the 4, x minus 1 to the minus 4, and we've got minus 3x plus 5x, so 2x, and then we're going to have a minus 5. So if I, if I wanted to write it as a fraction, then this would look like x to the 4, 2x minus 5, over x minus 1 to the 4. Okay, that's what I would get if I used, if I wrote both of those as fractions, brought them under a common denominator. Now, if I was then asked where are the stationary points, then the only way a fraction can be 0 is if the numerator is 0. So that x minus 1 to the 4 makes no difference. So the two stationary points will be at x is 0 and x is 5 halves. OK? Now, let's have a look at number 4. Now, this time, we've got negative fractional indices, uh, which makes it all the more challenging. But we'll have a go. So we've got no numbers outside, so we're just dealing with the brackets. Um, we've got a 2x plus 1 to the half and a 2x plus 1 to the minus half. So we pull out the least of those two, OK, which is that one there. So 2x plus 1 to the minus a half gets factored out. And we also factor out, because we've got 2x minus 1 to the minus 3 halves, 2x minus 1 to the minus a half. So we're going to factor out 2x minus 1 to the minus 3 halves as well. Now, what do we have left? So 2x plus 1 to the minus a half times something will make the 2x plus 1 to the half. And that will be 2x plus 1. Remember, we've got that minus sign there as well. So it's minus 2x plus 1. And to get to this term here, I would have to multiply this by 2x minus 1 to get to that. So it's plus 2x minus 1. So we've got the 2x plus 1 to the minus a half. We've got the 2x minus 1 to the minus 3 halves. And here we've got minus 2x plus 2x, so they cancel. Then I've got minus 1, minus 1, so minus 2. So if I wanted to write this, um, uh, well, I'll write it like this first. So minus 2 lots of 2x plus 1 to the minus a half. 2x minus 1 to the minus 3 halves. And you could write that as a fraction if you wanted to. So minus 2 over 2x plus 1 to the half. And 2x minus 1 to the 3 halves. Like that. So if I was then asked where the stationary points are this, well, fractions, as we learnt up there, can only be 0 when the numerator is 0. Uh, so that denominator can be ignored. And minus 2 can never be 0. So this has no stationary points. OK? So um, whatever the original curve was, it didn't have any stationary points. OK? So this is how we deal with more complicated factorising.